G'day fellas and welcome to a casted game spawning in on the southeast side of the map. We've got Gnushuba, who is going to be playing for us the Delhi Sultanate today. For anybody unfamiliar with Gnushuba, he is of course uh, one of the Age of Empires 3 pros. This guy, uh, when the Definitive Edition came out, he took the scene by storm up there with names like Kaiser Klein, Hazza, uh, Samwise and other big players in there as well. Mito, another one to, to come to mind and Gnushuba was, uh, was one of those guys who was just ahead of the curve when it came to the meta. Uh, an incredibly strong player, and uh, currently sitting at rank 94 on the ladder in Age of Empires 4. On the opposite side of the map, we have the one, the only, the big poop playing the Mongols. Uh, yes, he's back, ladies and gentlemen. He is back, and uh, he brought a brand new civilization out today. It is the Mongols, and for anybody unfamiliar with this player, this, of course, is Salami. So Salami in here doing a little bit of a smurfing. He likes to do a little bit of smurfing, we'll say. Uh, but uh, going to be playing the Mongols for us today, Salami is. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's going to be able to unpack today because he's unpacked his town center on a perfect gold mine and wood spawn. This is the 10 out of 10 spawn. I say the 10 out of 10 spawn because you can't really get much better than this. I mean, you can. Like, there's a few maps. I think Altai and King of the Hill, you can get a... Technically, you can get a wood line. Um, or did I say King of the Hill? I meant Altai and... Um, what is it? Altai and... Uh, Hill and Dale, you can get a deer gold woodline spawn. It is possible uh, to get it. Very, very rare. Uh, so maybe maybe we'll give it an 8 out of 10. Or we'll give it a 9 out of 10. We'll give it a 9 out of a 10. But uh, no early aggression coming out at the moment from Big Poopy. He is heading down towards this position. I do suspect that we may potentially uh, see... Uh, an early uh, an early barracks coming out from him, but we'll have to pay attention and take a look at this. This is probably one of the worst spawns I've ever seen of this map. Oh, lordy, lordy, lordy. Okay, uh, let's talk about this. So I'm going to count how many um, how many pawns are on Salami's side. So I got zero, zero again, uh, zero, zero here, uh, zero here, zero there. It looks like he's got zero pawns on his side. Let's have a look at how many noosh has got. Um, he's got one. That's two right there. Three right there. That's a fourth one. That's a fifth pawn. That's a sixth pawn. And um, I'm going to show you guys just quickly what Boulder Bay would look like if it did spawn on this map. It'd be like that. And then you'd, you'd also have like a row of fish here. Uh, and like a couple of shorefish up here. And <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I gotta stop that. Uh, all right. So this is probably one of the worst map spawns I've ever seen. Uh, this is absolutely fucking wild. I genuinely can't believe how terrible this is. This is seriously bad map spawn generation. To think that one player has literally one, two, three, four, five, six around them. I mean, we can do the math on like, okay, that's one screen away. And then like you look at this. That's where he was going to spawn. I mean, can you see how far away that is? I, I feel like the distance is just absolutely massive between these guys. Like, it's not even that. It's like, it's like that. That's wild, dude. It is absolutely wild. I can't believe that. <laughs> All right, let's see how Salami does then because um, he's going to have a tough time in this game going up against a player who's not only playing a very strong defensive water civilization, uh, but going up against a player who is... Uh, at a serious map advantage. Um, and, I mean, Salami going to be starting off strong, though. He does get the deep water fish, which is going to be very important. Not going to be looking to contest water, it seems, against Delhi, which is a pretty smart move. Now, one of the things that people often do against Delhi is they try and go and siege down that dock. Uh, and, obviously, against Delhi, it's not the smartest idea, guys. Don't be sieging down docks. Uh, just because their villagers, or their fishing boats, rather, have the capacity to actually shoot. Uh, looks like we're going to be spotting down a mosque coming down as well as a Dome of the Faith going to be going down as well. Uh, we'll do a quick assessment. I want to have a look at the, the sacred site so you can see that there are the two sacred sites coming out for Kanusha Bay. He's going to be happy to pick those up in the early stages of the game. I expect that we'll probably see him go into something like maybe a Piety uh, into Sanctity build uh, against the Mongols, but we'll have to see how he plays. Might probably just, he'll probably just go into efficient production. I mean, it's, it's a smart thing to do. Kanusha Bay now actually looking to invade the pond of Big Poop, aka Salami. You can see he's got the Khan out here trying to harass down this villager. Uh, also brings his own villager as well. He's going to force back that villager and actually going to try and get him to... to, to 
get it up. It's not going to work, though. Nusha Bear going to be losing a villager in the early game. Let's see if he tries and snags off that sheep as well. Doesn't look like he's going to be doing it. Beautiful blocking coming in. Oh, you got to love the blocking. This is this is high-level micro right here. This is something that we saw Marine Lord do uh, in, uh, in the finals uh, of his game that he played. Just beautiful blocking right here. Managing to get it back to the uh, outpost. Oh, yeah, God, I love that kind of stuff. Oh, so sneaky. So freaking good. Well played, Salami, right there. Top 10 moves, dude. Uh, oh, my God. That was... <laughs> that is the definition of body blocking. If you don't know what body blocking is, well, you know, you've come to the right place because that that is body blocking. You are preventing your enemy from attacking your own units by blocking them with your other units. <sighs> I feel like we just watched a Dota 2 game right there. Like... I, I was literally watching Shadow Fiend in the mid lane blocking creeps just then. That was some crazy level stuff. Uh, Doc gonna be able to get up though, but this is absolutely fine at the moment now because Kanushal Bear is up to the next stage. He's gonna be able to get a Dao out on this pond, but by the same token, uh, we're gonna see Salami look to get a Dao out himself. He's also got the outpost here as well, so he's gonna be fine. Uh, gotta be careful here. He's gonna be losing this Khan if he's not careful. Khan gonna be heading towards the top of that mountain. We'll check in with uh, Kanushal Bear, see what he's up to. Uh, looks like he's going to be training up some scholars. Indeed, going for efficient production into Sanctity, into Piety. Uh, so that is the pretty standard opening there. Khan actually going to be chasing down a second villager. You can see that villager just, you know, the, the villagers for the Delhi, they don't, me muscle, <laughs> they don't mess around. They don't go to, uh, to heaven. They don't go to hell. They just go straight into the water. You just evaporate like that. It's like, mm, uh, just gone. Just absolutely gone. Uh, but uh, now it looks like Big Poop on the other side of the map. Going to be doing his thing. Uh, no real age up in the queue at the moment. Obviously got only two villagers on that uh, that gold. So probably going to be fighting things out in the uh, in the second age. But uh, interestingly, not a lot of villagers on wood either. So I'm curious to see exactly how this is going to unfold an outpost coming down here as well. Uh, so probably going to be moving the town center, I would expect. I mean, you, why else would you see that outpost come out? Who knows? But now Dow going to be coming out onto the onto the water here, creating a fair bit of havoc. We do see that a, um, it does look like a scout did go down in the middle of the map. An outpost going to be going down as well. Going to be careful here not to lose this villager. Actually, he's going to be absolutely fine. Dow going to be coming out now. And uh, Big Poop going to be able to take control of the water. Now, Salami, at the same time, uh, wants to prevent his opponent from taking control of the sacred sites. This is something that we've talked about many a time before. If you're up against the Delhi, you must deny their sacred sites. It's something that I love to harp on because it is just so important. And now we're going to see Kanusha Bear, unfortunately, going to be losing his dock, going to be losing his Dow, going to be losing absolutely everything he invested in this pond, including that fishing boat uh, that he started off with as well. Uh, but uh, now we've got that outpost up. He's in a great spot over here. Manages to uh, actually unfold a lot of the damage out onto these fishing boats. He's going to be able to take them down if he's not careful as well. It looks like Nushal Bear going to almost lose that one fishing boat, but manages to pull it back up. Uh, but, uh, oh, I've just realized he's not moving the town center. So the villagers don't get the movement speed uh, from the town center. That doesn't actually generate. So the Yam network, which is the... Uh, the buff that is provided out by outposts isn't generated uh, by the town center. It's only generated by outposts. It's also generated by the deer stones. And the deer stones have been moved out of the main base. I'm not sure exactly why that is. I'm sure we'll find out later on. Uh, but obviously, he's decided to move that out. Now, you can see the beautiful macro coming in here from Salami. 1,300 food at the moment and just straight away going up uh, to that castle age. Uh, by the same token, looks like Kanusha Bear going to be doing the same thing. Uh, and, uh, and looking to go up to the next age. A single light junk is out on the open ocean for him. And it uh, and looks like this pond has almost completely been cleaned up. The outpost doing a great job of stopping it. And uh, he has picked up now that, uh, that extra range as well. Uh, but uh, looks like a bit, of a, a bit of a tower rush now. Um, Mongol preventing the, uh, the scholars from coming out onto the map. He said, hey, you get back from there. Very smart moves here from Salami as well. Because not only does this outpost deny 4,000 or, or rather... Uh, 2,000 uh, fish. It also denies the sacred site. Big brain, big moves. Absolutely love it. What a mogul. Uh, Salami doing God's work over here. And speaking of God's work, on the other side of the map, it looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of a step out coming down and uh, going down with 18 villages, no less. So he's getting this bad boy up nice and quick. Looks like Sal Salami's opponent, Kanushal Bear, going to be aging up shortly as well. Uh, going to be clicking up any second. You can see him moving villages back. Probably going to be dropping that House of Learning down going to be going here a little bit closer down towards that Dome of the Faith. But uh, House of Learning going to be going up. He had 14 villages on it initially. Now only just seven. So not going to be rushing it up. Not that important for him. But uh, I mean, at this point in time, Kanushal Bear has, is yet to capture either of the sacred sites. 
Uh, yet to deny the water off, off, um, off Salami. Salami is looking pretty good at this point, honestly. Uh, it, it can be, it's, it's such a difficult matchup here for both of these players. Both civilizations incredibly strong. And speaking of incredibly strong, Mongol Khan just doing what it does best. Sitting up outside the range of outposts, outside the range of town centers. Single-handedly denying an entire resource line. Because why not? It's a free unit and it respawns even if it dies. So who cares? It's just, this is a joke. This is a joke of a unit. Delete this unit. I don't care what you say. Delete it. I don't want it. I don't like it. Get it out of here. Looks like back towards the uh, the west side of the map, which, as you guys do know, is the best side of the map. Uh, Kanusha Bear going to be scouting out, looking for some relics. We'll do a quick assessment of the relics. Uh, we'll check in now uh, and and see we've got. So we've got one up here. I might move the uh, the map uh, to a, a more... Do we, do we dare follow the Khan around? Uh, so we've got one relic. We've got two relics. Three relics up here. Fourth relic and a fifth relic. Um, so relatively even, I would say, probably even a little bit more favored towards Salami, just because just because he got no actual, no uh, water spawn. So it means it's going to be like, he just walks like very easily to these four relics. Whereas like, you know, there's water spawns that have happened here. So it makes it a lot harder to reach them for Kanushal Bear. Uh, so, I mean, to each their own. But uh, I mean, I, I don't know about you guys. I'd be preferring the water spawns. But uh, I mean, at, at this point, I definitely feel like uh, Kanushal Bear probably hasn't played uh, to significant advantage uh, with regard to that. Hasn't hasn't been able to really utilize his... Uh... Did I just hear a fucking... Is, is there a... Oh, what? Wait. Did... Yeah, okay. I, I was going to say, I heard a ballista. Oh, it's this one right here. It's the uh, the Springwood. I'm like, I heard a Springwood and I can see this unit's got no health on it. Yo, wh why is this Scholar not healing? Scholar, can you do your job? Thanks, bro. I shouldn't have to tell you to heal. Uh, multiple Springwood outposts now coming up for Salami. We are starting to see this unfold as the play style that's happening. And this is becoming concerning. I'm going to be honest with you guys. We're seeing this a lot. Outposts. Towers. Spring towers, springles in towers, keeps, forward barbicans, big poop, aka salami, is doing this a lot and he's taking over the ladder with it. You can see at the moment he's sitting at rank 97, but the reality is he's actually a top 10 player. And one of the big things that he's doing is this he's hitting people with the sprinkled towers. And he's now got sprinkled towers over the entire map. And the crazy thing is, as the Mongols, he's literally getting these for, for essentially for free. I mean, if, if we were going to do, like, we'll watch this outpost go up. Actually, we can come back to this one here. He's not going to have got it. No. He Now, obviously, there's an opportunity cost, all right? And it's important that I mention that to you guys. Because 125 stone that you spend on a, on a sprinkled emplacement is 125 stone you could have spent elsewhere. You could have got a spearman out. You could have got, you know, halfway to a man at arms, that sort of thing. Okay? So, they're, they're, it's not for free. Um, there is an opportunity cost, but by for all intents and purposes, it's for free because your Uvu is sitting here doing nothing. You get 150 wood at the start of the game. You can make an Uvu for free. You don't have to make houses. So you can spend that wood on nothing other than an Uvu. I mean, you can make a Gur if you want. You can make some outposts if you want. What the heck is that? What? That is the weirdest looking... I have... I don't... It, this looks like a minivan. Like, this to me, it looks like, you know, the... the um. Oh, the, those ugly little minivans. I'm kind of tempted to just break the fourth wall right now and Google it for you guys. You know, oh, the, oh, I can't remember, but look at it. It's I've never seen that before. The blacksmith moving. Why does it look so weird? You're a weird looking blacksmith. You know that? I hope you know that. I hope, you, I hope your mother and your father told you that when you were growing up. You, you know what, blacksmith? I hope they didn't tell you that. That's, that'd be really terrible. But speaking of really terrible, Kanushal Bear now going to be looking to siege down this outpost on the front line and, uh, and look to try and put on some damage. Uh, Springle Tower is going to continue doing plenty of work. I'll just note that there's a person in the Twitch chat right now that says, please stop mining about, please stop whining about Mongols. And I can just tell you right now, everybody on YouTube, that is 100% a Mongol player. I guarantee you that guy, that guy has been playing Mongols since the closed beta. And yeah, don't, just, you just, you just ignore that guy, right? You just ignore that guy. Uh, but, uh, Mongol Khan going to be going down. Um, and, uh, and now Mongol Khan uh, manages to take out one of the, uh, one of the scholars on the back line, as it does. Uh, Springle Tower is continuing to just go up around the map. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, Veteran Khan going to be able to get away. You can see it's got that movement speed under its belt. 
It's got that. It's got the uh, the the Yam network as well, so it's going to be running at 1.87 movement speed, and uh, we've just got a complete lockdown at this point. There's just so many of these sprinkled tower sprinkled towers that are out, and even if they do manage to go down, I mean, I, I do like the use of the um the the use of the scholars in here as well. Uh, but Khan, Khan, can't help it, mate. You're terrible. You're terrible, Salami. You're terrible. How are you letting your Khan die like that, friend? Looks like Deer Stones have moved up down towards the south side. Has captured up the Sacred Site. We'll check in with Salami. We'll see how he's beginning to build his composition. Um, he is uh, adding in, in uh, these bad boys. Crossbows. Uh, this is definitely the right choice. There's a couple of options that he's got, but obviously he knows his enemy is making armored units. So he wants to be thinking about the counters for them. So crossbow is definitely going to be the right way to go. Um, the question is, what is he going to be looking to supplement that unit with? Because you can't just go only crossbows. You go only crossbows, you're going to lose because there's a lot of units coming out right now for Big Poop's opponent, Kanusha Bear. Kanusha Bear beginning to build up his mass quite significantly. 15 men at arms out here. Own Blades has now come in. Do we have those plus one upgrades coming through? Uh, it does look like we're getting Force March coming through. Uh, he does have, in fact, uh, two blacksmiths that have come out, but now quite a, a bit of a mass coming out here. These men at arms getting out in the front line. They've got their yam network. They've got their sprinkled in their sprinkled towers in the back line, and uh, a little bit of a raid coming down towards the south. Way too many units coming down to this sacred site, and as a result, it was getting exploded on the front. So Kanusha Bear making a bit of a mistake there. Sacred site going to get captured up with the uh, with the ten lancers there as well. But uh, we'll check back in with with. Uh, our big poop and see how he's doing. He's beginning to push forward now. Going to be looking to siege down that outpost on the front line. 1,700 wood stacked up right now for big poop, aka Salami. And he's going to be looking to add in a Gur here. I wouldn't be surprised if I was Salami just right now. Just add a whole bunch of pastures. Just add in a thousand pastures, bro. Uh, you probably don't want to add them there. Look at this. Prayer tent out, on, out and about on the field. Where's your Uvu right now, Salami? I don't even know where your Uvu is. Uvu. Do I do Mongolian throat singing? That would be hard to do, actually. Uh, it's it's really deep, isn't it? Like, I'm I reckon that, that's pretty close. That's pretty close. That's not bad. A little bit of a raid now going to be coming in. Kanusha Bed actually doing pretty work, pretty decent work. Uh, manages to take out a few villages. Uh, apparently, it's out over to the left. I thought that was where it initially started. He's just moved it slightly over to the left. Village has got to be careful now. Kanusha Bear under attack, or rather attacking. Um, and uh, now going to be able to move those villages back towards the town center. A huge raid's coming in through here. I like that he's got the scout in here. It helps out with the line of sight, spotting out those villages. Not actually going to be able to take out any of them. They've got that... Uh, or actually, I take that back. He's got one or two that he manages to take down. But uh, does repel the raid or uh, repels the attack. Veteran Spearman has come through for Big Poop. And slowly and steadily, this dock is going down. Now, if I'm Kanusha Bear, I'm just deleting this dock. I can't stand the fact that uh, that has been alive for so damn long. But uh, we'll do a quick stock take when it comes to the relics and see how Kanusha Bear did. It looks like he managed to pick up two relics. Although, I don't actually see the relics in any of... Where are the relics? Where are your relics? Hide your kids, hide your wife, hide your relics. Very well hidden right now, Kanusha Bear. Am I blind? Oh, I'm blind. There's two in there. I'm, I'm looking at the Dome of the Faith. I, and I want to try some more of that Mongolian throat singing, man. I reckon I can get that. It, it's so hard to get that really deep note. It kind of sounds like a didgeridoo. For anybody who's heard the Australian didgeridoo, it kind of sounds a little bit similar to that. Uh, back towards the base now of uh, of Salami he continues uh, to suffer significant raids. Um, still no upgrades coming through for these units. Now, one of the things that we do see uh, players of the Delhi variety do is drop down four blacksmiths when they get up to the third age, but we haven't seen that yet. Got to be careful here because without those upgrades, it means that you're going to be a lot more susceptible to these raids. Uh, Springwood Outposts obviously doing plenty of damage here as well. Now, keep in mind that the Springwood Outposts... Oh, look at the Deerstones. It's like ding, 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 ding. I, I, I want to do like the Tokyo Drift music. That, that's really what I want to do. But like, yeah, it, it's so fast, dude. 1.12 movement speed. It's not that fast, actually. It's not that fast. It used to be pretty fast. It's not fast anymore. I mean, it's still fast. It can outrun men at arms, but that's about it. Um, but uh, Salami now looking to try and clean up this little mess over here towards the west of the map that's been created. Going to be losing out his Khan again if he's not careful. In fact, he is probably going to be losing it 100%. Khan goes down. 
improved siege engineering has come out. We can see those mangonels on the front line now. Uh, I'm looking down towards the uh, the south. It looks like mangonel versus Springle is going to be coming out. We're going to be entering into the, uh, the the beautiful mode where we can see the entire screen right now. There you guys go, and now the fight begins. Mangonels firing off on those Springles. You can see the Springles unloading towards the back there. A lot of damage coming out, and huge volleys coming out on those men at arms. No splits at all coming in. You can tell that uh, Kanushal Bear is not a gymnast whatsoever. Beautiful splits coming out for Salami, putting in Mangonels in all different directions, cleaning up the majority of the units. Got a couple of crossbows out here as well. Manages to get on the back line as well, taking out those Mangonels, and really a difficult position right now for Kanushal Bear at this point in time. We'll tune back in with uh, with with how these players are doing. And Kanusha Bear, he's not looking pretty. Uh, huge infantry mass here continuing for Salami. Oh, wrong button right there. Apologies. Uh, but uh, yeah, Kanusha Bear, I, I really don't know what he's going to be able to do or how he's going to be able to hold on at this point in time. Obviously did have a large mass of Lancers, but they were all taken out. Managed to get out the Springled and take out the, the, uh, the backline Mangonel. But... Uh, he's actually going to be able to race that Springled away by the looks of it. You can see he's trying his best to have it taken out. And uh, I think I think he's going to get it, manages to get it. So very nicely done. Uh, oh my gosh, Lumber Preservation finally coming in now uh, for Kanushal Bear. A little bit of a delay on that one. I think he might, may have forgotten about that. Um, but uh, now it looks like a trebuchet going to be coming down on the front line as well. Uh, so somehow managing to, to even up. I, I suspect the difference may have been the, the sprinkled emplacements in the, in the outposts. Deerstone's going to be going down here as well on the front. Big group looking to shore up the position. Reinforcings continue. Reinforcements, rather. We've got 50, uh, 50 economy for Salami. Down on the other side, we've got 50 uh, for Kanusha Bear. So both players sitting on 50 economic units at the moment. But the big difference, obviously, going to be the Sacred Sites and the Relics. So we've got 400 gold per minute versus up towards the north. Actually, where was that? Uh, we should take a look and see if we can find it. The Monastery. I know it's around here somewhere. There she is. So that's 300 gold, plus this one is 400 gold. So both players sitting on a passive 400 gold a minute. Double trebuchet going to be coming out here. Now, keep in mind these attraction trebuchets, a little bit uh, a little bit less damage on these bad boys, but I think they've still got the same range. No, they've actually got a shorter range. Uh, but these these guys are very quick to pack up, very quick to, uh, to unpack as well. Uh, but uh, now continuing to unfold those big rocks, unload those big rocks uh, towards the barracks. And uh, Salami continuing to look strong. Salam, uh, Neutral Bear only sitting on 23 military, whereas 55 right now for Salami. Uh, he's got docks up down here. A little bit of a backlight coming out as well. Um, so uh, curious decisions coming out now. But uh, look at the, the siege that is really coming out. You can see the, the, the reason why this is so strong. Can I, can I just add... Can I take this quick opportunity just to advocate for slower building siege from infantry? So both the Abbasid as well as the uh, the Mongols, can build these siege units. But look how fast they come up. Like, look at this. To me, that's absolutely crazy. It, it just it just feels a little bit silly. That's all. That's all. Let's, I'm going to throw that out there for a second. Uh, and hopefully, hopefully you guys like what I'm throwing out. Traction Trebuchet is looking very strong, though. Big Poop in a commanding lead at this point in time. We'll check in with the score of these players and just see how far ahead he is. That's the Sacred Tracker, Drongo. Good try. Hmm. Now, keep in mind, he's playing the Mongols, and typically the Mongols are going to have a higher score than your enemy, than their enemy. Uh, would they have this high of a score? I mean, I, I'm kind of feeling like, you know, this is is half of this. So, yeah, it's a tough spot. Those Mangadels getting off some interesting shots. Khan does go down. Kanushal Bear really struggling. We'll check income a minute and just see how close these guys are. You can see Kanushal Bear actually ahead significantly when it comes to that food income. Uh, but when it comes to the gold, when it comes to the wood... It's, uh, it's going to be Salami, who is ahead by quite a bit. Uh, but yeah, that's part of the reason why you don't really want to rely on that score. But uh, Springle trading now going to begin happening. Ideally needs to pull villagers out so he's able to heal these bad boys up. And going to be able to get out a nice little lead on that. Uh, so Kanusha Bear holding on for dear life. Double Mangonel back here as well. So should be okay with that. We see the triple Mangonel actually. Is that triple? Doubles? Looks like just the two Mangonels at this stage. But uh, yeah, this is the hard part, right? Because... Kanushal Bear trades out really effectively against these Springles. And then a whole bunch of Springles just pop up in its place. Literally like nothing. Like, just click your fingers and they're there. 
And, you know, you're, lo you're looking at Neutral Bear, right? And he's got one Siege Workshop. And he's also got the Scholar in it. He's not going to be able to keep up with the Springwoods of his enemy. And he's literally got the equivalent of two Siege Workshops, but he's only got one. Like, it it's just wild. You know, when I'm at... When, when Drongo is advocating for the Delhi player, that's when you know that, uh, that, that we mean business. Continuing to to attack. We'll check in on the back lines. Uh, Step it out. Going to be bringing in all those beautiful gold resources here. Uh, you can see the, the economy coming through for Big Poop right now. Looking very strong. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. Actually, I'd love to see where the pastures are. Show me where those delicious pastures are. Do you not have any pastures at all, Salami? I guess you don't need it, dude. Look at you. You're just making siege. I mean, wh where are you getting your... Oh, my God. It's hit me in the face with the rocks. Ugh. Ugh. Do you guys see that? Are they going to unload anymore? Let's watch. Let's watch. Whoa. They don't have the same arc on them, these trebuchets. They got a bit of a weird arc. Let's, let's watch. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a bit of a delay where they're, when they're, um, their boulder comes out as well. I don't know if you guys are seeing that. They, they like go back, but the boulder's like a half a second delayed. Maganel shots coming out on these men at arms. Picking up some free units. Kanusha Bear. He's looking to try and push out into the middle of the map and potentially take that sacred site. You can see him out. Going to actually be following the Khan in. But uh, yeah, we really see this uh, this play style from, from Delhi. Or from, uh, from Salami. Just being incredibly strong. He's going to be looking out towards this, uh, this eastern front. And looking to try and take control of the game. But just not having a lot of luck at the moment, unfortunately. Play is really entering into a lull state. Triple trebuchet. Continuing to seep down. Just focusing down these core buildings. And this is really where the power of, of that technology comes in. It's part of the reason why Mongols are so strong. Improved siege engineering. And now those Springwoods going to be looking to pick off a Manganel. Managed to get it off. Great trades right there. And you can see he's just got six... Uh, six Springwoods out trying to deal with it. He's only got four out for his opponent. Obviously, he's lost his Siege Workshop as well. So, going to have to rebuild that bad boy down towards this position. You can see he's got units back here, but it's just going to take so much time. So difficult to deal with. And, uh, yeah, like, th this is just beautiful Mongol Siege right here. This is 100%. Like, how do you deal with, with this Siege Mass coming out? And uh, I really think this is, this is like, 100% the future of Age of Empires 4. It's part of the reason why it's got to get changed. Like, this is just so incredibly difficult to stop. Mongol Khan, plus Yam Network, Trebuchets, plus the Catapults, plus the Springwood, plus the... Like, it's just got so much going for it in here as well. Crossbows, Veteran Spears. Age of, Age of Siege. Yeah, that, 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 that's an accurate assessment, I would say. Um, have we got upgrades? Yeah, it looks like we're starting to get upgrades finally through on these Delhi units. Um, but uh, keep in mind the Siege Mass is looking very, very strong right now. Kanushalba under massive Siege. He's lost his main town center. First landmark of the game going down. And uh, Salami going to be picking that one up. Continuing just to Siege down the base of his opponent. And you can see he's working his way towards it. And I love the way that he's really come around to this position. Uh, looks like the uh, Deer Stones is slowly getting Siege down as well. Manganel is going to be coming in. A lot of Springwoods now coming out. Seven Springwoods in total. I would expect that we'd actually see some further Springwoods going to be coming out. Uh, sp seven Springwoods now out for Salami as well. Uh, but I wouldn't be surprised if we got a few more out. You can see actually a little bit of a forced march going to be coming in right here. Kanusha Bear trying his best but making a mistake and using the right click before it's too too soon. And look at the Manganel Mass just going to be able to siege through or melt through all of these mana arms. Oh, that's loud. I'm sorry if you've got your speakers turned up because that was a lot of damage that just came out. Mangadel's now going to be turning their attention towards this position. And it looks like good game gets called. The men at arms got completely cleaned up. And it looks like Nushal Bear didn't want anything left to deal with Salami. So Salami being, being an absolute beast in that position. Fellas, make sure you check out Salami. I'm going to leave links in the description. I'll catch you guys in the next one. And check out N4C. There'll be a link for that as well. I'm going to be casting on the ground down at Berlin.